Nearly 47 years after slavery had officially ended in the United States, my mother's grandma Margie ran away twice from the white family who still owned her in Cachetta, Louisiana. It was sometime around the year 1913, and Margie was just a teenager at the time. She was also the mother of two young children, my mom's own mother and one of my mom's uncles, and she took them with her when she ran away to the town of Ringgold, Louisiana. Margie met and married my mom's grandpa, Walter Beck, a farmer with a lot of land. With him, she had four more children. They were happy. By the 1930s, the Beck family had prospered. Two of their sons, Walter and Henry, built houses across the street from one another on the farm. Then terror struck. My grandfather, Beck, had um, discovered oil on his land, so he was very wealthy. He had a large farm and gave several acres to each of his two sons, who lived across the road from each other. They built houses facing each other. Remembering in those days that the houses were all frame, wood houses, lightly constructed. One night, Henry Beck's house was torched by what was considered white terrorists in those days. The house was completely destroyed, but miraculously, Henry and his family escaped. Flames did not uh, go across the road to my grandfather's house with Margie, my grandmother, and her children living there. But Henry was so alarmed that he immediately, rather than rebuilding the house on that land, knowing that they were targeted, he moved his family to California and changed his name from Beck to Ribs. He was very successful in California, had beautiful, well-educated children. Later, after the children themselves had decided to go west, Walter Beck moved. The children moved them to California, he and Margie. Uh, Walter and Margie's children and grandchildren were equally successful. The grandchildren were also well-educated and very uh, prominent people in their areas in California. Grand Uncle Henry and his family fled for their lives. They were so fearful that they would be pursued by those who wished them such harm that they changed their family name and joined the great migration of six million other African Americans from the rural southern U.S. to the Midwest and California. The great migration of African Americans began in the early 1900s and continued until the 1970s. Some left their homes and families in the rural South to escape violence and threats on their lives. Others left to seek economic opportunities. All of them left to find a place where they could live free of persecution, to be free to work and to earn a living, to be free to have a better life for their families. Fearing for their lives after their homes had been burned to the ground, my mother's Uncle Henry and his family left their farm in Louisiana and migrated to California in the 1930s. They started all over again. They changed their family name and invested in their children's education. Some years later, other family members left Louisiana as well, and they also migrated to California to join Henry. My mother, her sister, and their parents left their lives in the rural South too. They migrated to Illinois. Over time, my great-grandma Margie's children and grandchildren thrived and became prosperous once again in their new homes.
out of the ashes, born again. Thank you.